Hey guys, hope we don't get a lot of background music here. Uh, for those of you who uh, don't know me or know Joe, my son, uh, we live in Columbia, South America, and it's a loud nonstop party half the time. <laughs> it's always voted the happiest place on earth, and it happens to be the drunkest place on earth as well. So if you're a big drinker, this is the place to come. Uh, anyway, I want to talk to you a few minutes about weightlifting and boxing. There are people that are just adamantly opposed to lifting a barbell uh, or doing dumbbell work or knotless type work on these machines and whatnot. Uh, one of them was a great trainer, Angelo Dundee, who, tr who trained Sugar Ray Leonard and trained uh, Muhammad Ali. However, uh, I came from another school of thought, uh, which was not too bad itself, and it produced champions like Sonny Liston, George Foreman, Mike Tyson, uh, Pinkle and Thomas, many more champions. Uh, but I'm not saying one thing is dreadfully wrong and one thing is perfectly, you got to do it. I'm not saying that at all, but I am telling you, uh, there is a school of thought that you are not to lift any dead weight. You just lift living weight, which would be your body weight. And uh, that's great to do. The majority of what we do is calisthenic work, lifting the body, pulling the body up, pushing uh, yeah, pulling the body up, pushing the body up. But I want to tell you, um, we do do some dumbbell work here, but we're always on a push-pull method. Uh, one of the best channels on YouTube to get fit with is Bob and Fit, Bob and Fence Fitness Channel. Excuse me, got tongue twisted there. So that would be Bob and then uh, Fent, uh, which is F-A-F-E-N-T-S, Bob and Fent's fitness channel. Bob does a whole host of different things that will build your strength up, work your cardio. It's great, great guy to be watching. Uh Everything pretty much old school, uh, but there's hybrid. It's hybrid old school. I mean, it's it's uh, what Joe has worked with uh, from Bob and Fence Fit Fitness Channel. Uh, he he does a whole array of what Bob does, and it has worked wonders for him, and especially the cardio stuff. Uh, but the strength training as well. Um, so there again, uh, my advice would be if, if you are going to lift weights, as soon as you uh, do supersets, that means go from one thing to the other uh, with minimal, minimal pause. So if, if you were doing barbell work and you were doing bench pressing, he's got a beautiful video on this right now. Uh, but uh, you could lay down on a bench and do, uh, do uh, bench presses. And then he's got some strapping up, puts his foot at the end of the bench press, at the foot of the bench press, and pulling. So he goes from the pushing to the pulling. And what this does, this will not produce the standard lifting effects that happen to the body that will build the cellular structure and the muscle 
to just be constantly eating oxygen and slowing you down. Uh, so I believe you can lift weights. Uh, if you look at Joe's physique, it's obvious he does lift a little more than his body weight. But now we, he does some dumbbell work, but typically twice a week. And every time he pushes, on, pushes he's pulling. Uh, you do a pushing exercise. It could be military press, but then you need to be pulling. You could go from a, a military press to pull-ups, for example. Uh, and now if I did that, I would go uh, from the military press and I would do a pull-up this way, not this way. So, um, there are a variety of different techniques and things you can do. And when you just completely mark something off your list because somebody said so, investigate it a little bit more, young folks, uh, young boxers. Uh, one size does not fit all in this business. We have uh, Joe's come fresh off of knocking somebody out with somebody looking at 20 seconds in the second round and saying this kid ain't being trained well and whoever's training him is going to get him killed. So uh, then they've gotten up to the end and they're like, well, I misspoke here. And they certainly did because a lot of things, uh, people are doing things to pull you in. Uh, so there's a lot of different styles and methods to training. It's always a way to build your body up. If you can't do uh, uh, let's say you can do three pull-ups. Do those three pull-ups. And if you've got a bar in the house or something to lift yourself on in the house, uh, go back and do three periodically every day. And before you know it, you'll be doing five. And before you know it, you'll be doing 35. So you can build yourself up to things. Uh, one size does not fit all. Uh, your body is designed the way God gave you the gifts for it. And uh, maybe he gave Joe certain gifts. Maybe he gave you certain other gifts. So maybe there's things that this guy over here has to work on that you don't necessarily have to work on because it's been gifted to you. Um, I may put a few videos out this coming week on how to increase your punching power. And it's actually not increasing the power that you have. It's increasing the leverage that you use and the way that you do punch. Uh, we've got a young man coming up on a tournament. I uh, believe it's out of his state. I believe. But anyway, I turned him on. He's a tall guy. He's got some speed to him. And uh, he's training and doing things a certain way. And I just gave him a suggestion. Why don't you go watch Tommy Hearns? Because he's got a build like that. And uh, uh, I'm going to put out, it's really going to be for him, but everybody can see it. Uh, a video on how to increase uh, uh, overhand right uh, and how to increase punch, punch your punching in the power of your punches in general. So one size doesn't fit all. Um, uh, I thought about this watching Tim Witherspoon uh, largely forgot about former world heavyweight champion who was a two-time world heavyweight champion and he couldn't punch either and he became quite the knockout artist in his uh, during his run uh, so he had a good trainer that picked on what picked up on what he could do and picked up and understood what he couldn't do and they fixed these things see and uh, so maybe you uh, well, I just, you punch a little different, maybe, than all the rest of the guys in the gym. Maybe uh, your build's a little different, and you've got to figure out these weaknesses, 
how to make them uh, the weaknesses less apparent and whatever you are weak in, especially offensively, uh, more devastating to your opponent. So uh, there's a hundred ways to skin a cat, folks, the old cliche. And if you're around somebody that's only got the one way, uh, just talk to them, set them down, uh, and go do some things your way, maybe. Uh, make sure they're going to work first, then get back in the gym, and then show that trainer. And uh, you'll be you'll be amazed at these gym trainers that are in their 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s will start opening up and realizing, hey, I should have been doing this a long time ago. Uh, there's a lot of old, set in their ways men. I happen to be one of them. So I try to explore things, and I want you young boxers to try to explore things. And I want to let you know you can lift weights. If you're very weak, you do need to increase your strength. And uh, if you need to go beyond pushing and pulling your, your own body weight, your living weight, uh, you should work with some dead weight. Uh, um, not overly extensive, uh, but you should do pushing with pulling and every single thing you do uh, that will help build the strength build the muscle uh, without creating the more dense muscle uh, tissue muscle cellular structure that requires all the oxygen and slows you down uh, so you can build some muscle without being slowed down folks uh, if they're telling you different they're just not understanding that that can be done so much love to you young boxers hope this helps helps you guys out uh just remember in your boxing journey one size does not fit all and there's a million ways to skin a cat